Hi and welcome, I'm Reverend Naomi Bierman and I welcome you to Metaphysical Ministry International. What is a metaphysical ministry anyway? Well, meta means bigger than. It's bigger than the physical world you experience. With your five senses, you can only experience less than 1% of what actually exists. So when you learn to move beyond the physical, beyond the five senses, into the part that is all of you, that belongs to the all is one, suddenly that vast, over 99% of reality enters your being. Life becomes a much richer experience and you see everything differently. We start every week with a happy share. That's something that leaves you feeling happy, or feeling good, or feeling peaceful, or feeling calm. And for me, my happy share is the fact that I'm here. Because after that brain surgery, eight months ago, you know what, I couldn't talk, I couldn't swallow, I couldn't move on my own. I had learned to do all that stuff all over again. So I think it's pretty dang amazing that I was able to persist and know that I'm more in those five senses so that I can be here with you again. Now I've got a story to tell you. See, I saw this ad in the paper and it was all about a dog who talks. And it said, talking dog, $20. And first I put it aside and I thought, oh yeah, right. But then I went back and I got pretty curious. So I called the number in the ad and the owner said, well, sure, come on over. So I called a friend, we went over. I wasn't going to go there alone, you know, right? So we go in, and there's this, I don't know, dog, so I can't tell you what breed it was. It was probably a mutt combination anyway. It was this very gentle, peaceful-looking dog. And I sat down next to it and said hi. And well, sure enough, the dog said hello. And I said, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. So the dog started with, well, First, he was one of those dogs you see in the airport. He goes around and sniffs all the luggage, looking for bombs. And he said, well, you know, I did that for a long time. You know, that was a lot of work, walking up and back and up and back. And I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. I did some good because on a rare occasion, I actually found some explosives. So I know I saved lots of lives. But as I said, I wanted to do something a little more exciting with a little bit less constant walking around. So I started working for the fire department. Now that was really exciting and I got to be so proud because I could help the firemen know where somebody was and if somebody in fact was still in the blazing building. So you know I got to save lives there. And I was like a hero and everybody just petted me and loved me and honored me. But then, you know, that got a little bit hot and heavy. So the next thing I did was I went to work for the police department. Now, that was really cool because I got to ride around with my partner in those special K-9 cars. Now, talk about impressing ladies. Well, I did that for a long time. And as I thought, I got a lot of attention, helped the police to save a lot of lives to interfere before the crime hurt anybody. And lately, I decided I wanted to take a step closer to retirement, so I started just going into these senior centers, kind of like a therapy dog, because just being around, well, you can see how charming I am. People love to pet me, and they felt better. So that's what I did. And right now, I'm still doing that, though I'm really thinking of retiring myself. And I sat there, and I was just like, wow. This dog really, really talks. And this dog is a major hero, a major contributor to society. So I turn to the owner and I say, this dog's amazing. Why? Why are you selling this dog for only $20? So he looks at the dog, looks at me. He says, because he's a liar. Now, in case you haven't guessed, I made all that up. But I, my question for you is, who in your life has ever lied to you? Is there ever a good reason to tell a lie? Because a lie doesn't have to be something that you speak, that you know isn't true. A lie can also be something that you don't say that you know is true. I'll throw out a few examples. 
I'm also a healthcare practitioner, and quite a few years ago, someone came to me, and I knew she had cancer. She didn't know it yet. I decided not to tell her. Well, why would I make a decision like that? Because I knew that she had an appointment with a doctor in the medical community, and I knew she was going to seek help along medical lines. So I let the doctor, who's going to become her caretaker, tell her. And then a few years ago, someone came to me, and I knew that her brain was starting to deteriorate. And I also chose not to tell her, because she was so adamant about the fact that she wasn't going to sink into Alzheimer's like her sister did. So I didn't mention anything to her. I worked on her. The work that we did established her back to health, killing the candida, which caused many of her current physical symptoms. And she called me so excited, thanking me so much for helping her to get her life back. She said she hadn't had that much energy in years. She hadn't been that happy and felt that wonderful in years. And then if I ever needed her to give me a testimonial, just let her know. That was a few years ago. I never asked her for the testimonial then. And unfortunately, today she's not well enough to be able to give me one. But you see, those were two times when by not telling the people what I knew, it was actually lying to them. So what do you do in your life, and when have you lied by omission or even lying by speaking other words, or what was your reason for doing so? You know what, go ahead down below this video, leave a comment, share this video with your friends. You never know whose life you might touch. Now I'm going to make another video that I'll put up on my site, howtohaveamazingrelationships.com, that'll follow up with what I'm talking about here. Because sometimes we regret that we told somebody a lie. Because sooner or later, chances are they're going to find out. And then they're going to wonder why we weren't truthful with them. They may be grateful we weren't, but they may wonder. If you have anything in your life for which you'd like some help, if you look up there on the Metaphysical Ministry International site, you see that space up there? Hold a space for. Holding a space for isn't a prayer circle. It's seeing you living a vision that you want to have. Maybe you're interested in moving to a new home, or getting a new car, or a new job. Whatever it could be, if you scroll down the bottom, you leave a comment, you ask us to hold the space for something, your request will appear up there. And what happens is everybody who comes to the site and reads it both down below and up there will just take a moment and just see you living whatever it is you requested. See you living in that new house see you driving that new car. Be specific when you ask. Maybe not just a different car, but a new car. Whatever it is that you want us to help you hold your vision for. See, the more people putting energy in it, the bigger the message is going out to the universe. The universe can pick up on it and fulfill it even faster if and when it's in your highest and best interest. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And I look forward to getting back my singing voice and once again becoming the metaphysical, <laughs> the metaphysical minstrel minister. That's it. Enjoy a wonderful day. Blessings.